So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve 3 by 3 systems of linear equations algebraically. So we're going to work on problems that look like this. Notice that these equations look very similar to the ones that we've been working on, but all of these equations now have a z term in them. So let's talk about what these equations mean and what we're trying to do when we solve these systems. So an equation that has three variables like this is going to represent a plane that exists in 3D space. So for example, 5x minus 3y plus z equals negative 4 is the equation that is pictured here. So you can see that represents a plane that's in 3D space. I know it's 3D because notice that in addition to my x and y axes, I have this third axis, which is my z axis. So remember back in geometry, you learned that two planes will intersect at a line. So what we're doing when we're solving a system of three equations is we're trying to figure out where three planes will intersect. So a system that has one solution will intersect at a point that's going to be represented by x, y, z, which is an ordered triple. We can also have systems that have infinite solutions. If all three planes intersect at a line, that line is going to contain every point that's a solution to the system. Well, remember, lines have infinite number of points, so that means we're going to have infinite number of solutions. You can also have a system that's going to intersect in the same plane. So that means that every point in the plane is going to be a solution to the system. Well, once again, a plane is an infinite collection of points, so every point is going to be a solution means we have infinite number of solutions. You can also have systems that have no solution. And the reason we have no solution is because all three planes will have no points in common. So you can see in A and B, two of the planes have lines in common, but all three don't have any points in common. C shows us a system where no planes have any points in common. So all three of these situations will give us a system with no solution. So there are three ways to go about solving three by three systems. The first method is algebraically, which is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Then we're going to do matrices with Kramer's rule in the next lesson, and then we'll finally wrap up this unit with Gaussian elimination. So here's our problem solving strategy. We're going to use what we learned about substitution and linear combination to eliminate one variable from our three by three system. What will happen when we do this is it'll be turned into a two by two system, which we already know how to solve. So here are our steps. You're going to start off by deciding which variable to eliminate. So you can choose to eliminate x, y, or z. So you're going to pick two equations from your system and then use them to eliminate this variable. It's very helpful to get in the practice of numbering your equations. And then you're going to take two different equations and use them to eliminate the same variable. So these two new equations that you create are going to create a two by two system, which we can solve to find the values of two variables. And then once we have those two values, we're going to take them and substitute back into one of the original equations to find the value of the variable that we eliminated in the first place. And then finally, we can write our solution as an order triple. So let's see what this looks like with some examples. So let's try solving the system. You can see we have a three by three system three equations and three variables that we're going to go ahead and solve. So the first step is to decide which variable you want to eliminate. So this is one of those things that takes a little bit of practice. And as you do more problems, you'll start to see which variable it makes more sense to eliminate. So I'm deciding to eliminate Z and I'm going to write that down so I know what I'm doing. Um, and the reason I chose to eliminate Z because notice that in two equations, I already have equal and opposite values for the coefficients. So now I'm going to go ahead and number my equations. So I have equation 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to start off by combining equation 1 and equation 2. So I have x plus y plus z equals 6 combined with 2x plus 4y minus z equals 7. And I'm just going to add these two equations together. So when I do that, x plus 2x gives me 3x, y plus 4y gives me 5y, and that equals 6 plus 7, which is 13. So this new equation I create, I'm going to call equation number 4. Now I'm going to pick a different pair of equations. So the different pair of equations I'm going to pick are equation 2 and equation 3. And the reason I chose these is because notice that z has opposite sign in these two equations. So I have 2x plus 4y minus z equals 7. And I have 2x minus 4y plus 2z 
equals zero. So to get these to cancel, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the top equation by positive two. So when I do that, I get four X plus eight Y minus two Z equals 14. And that's gonna combine with my bottom equation, two X minus four Y plus two Z equals zero. So when I add these two equations together, 4x plus 2x is 6x, 8y minus 4y is plus 4y. And so now my z terms cancel, so I have 14 plus 0, which equals 14. So I'm going to call this equation number 5. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to combine equation 4 and equation 5. So equation 4 is 3x plus 5y equals 13. And equation five is six X plus four Y equals 14. So what I'm gonna do now is decide which variable I wanna eliminate. So I think it's gonna be easier to eliminate X. So I'm gonna multiply my top equation by negative two. So I have negative six X minus 10 Y equals negative 26. And I'm gonna combine that with my bottom equation, which is six X plus four Y equals 14. So when I add these together, my x terms cancel, negative 10y plus 4y is going to be negative 6y, and that equals negative 26 plus 14, which is negative 12. So now I can divide both sides by negative 6, which is going to give me y equals 2. So I finally have a value for one of my variables. So I want to take that value and I'm going to plug it into one of my equations. So I'm going to use equation number 4, and I'm going to plug in y equals 2 to solve for x. So equation four, when I have y equals two plugged in, is gonna be three x plus five times two equals 13. So I have three x plus 10 equals 13, and I'm gonna subtract 10 from both sides, which gives me three x equals three, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by three, which gives me x equals one. Okay, so now I figured out the value of my second variable, and so now I have x and y, I need to go back and figure out the value of z. So I have to go all the way back to my original problem and pick one of my original equations that had the z in it before I canceled it out. So I'm gonna use equation number one, and I'm gonna go in and plug in my x and y value that I found. So I have one plus two plus z equals six. One plus two is three, so I have three plus z equals six. And I can solve for z by subtracting 3 from both sides. So when I do that, I get z equals 6 minus 3, which is 3. Okay, so now my final step is to go ahead and write all the values I found as an ordered triple. So I have 1, 2, 3, which is the solution to my system of equations. So let's try another example. Let's try solving this system. So we're going to start off by deciding which variable to eliminate. So just based on how this system looks, I think I'm going to eliminate the value of y. Okay, and the reason is because I'm always looking for those equal and opposite terms, and notice that I have a 3y and a minus 3y. So I just think that's a good place to start. So I'm going to now number my equations. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by combining 1 and 3. So I have 10x plus 3y plus 2z equals 5, and equation 3, which is 4x minus 3y plus 3z equals 7. So when I add these equations together, 10x and 4x is 14x, and my y terms cancel, and then I have 2z plus 3z, which is 5z, and that equals 5 plus 7, which is 12. So now I have my equation number 4. Um, so now let's combine another pair of equations. So let's do 2 and 3. And so when I combine those two, I have 7x plus 6y plus 2z equals 20, and 4x minus 3y plus 3z equals 7. So remember, I'm still trying to um, get rid of my y, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply the bottom equation by 2. So I have 8x minus 6y plus 6z equals 14. And I'm going to combine that with the top equation, which is 7x plus 6y plus 2z equals 20. So when I add these two equations together, I have 7x plus 8x, which is 15x. My y terms once again cancel, and then I have 2z plus 6z, which is 8z. And that's equal to 20 plus 14, which is 34. 
So this is now going to be my equation number five. So I'm going to combine four and five. And so I have 14x plus 5z equals 12. And I have 15x plus 8z equals 34. So now you can decide which variable you want to eliminate. Um, just because z has smaller coefficients, I'm going to choose to eliminate z. So I'm going to turn the top equation into a 40z by multiplying by 8. And the bottom equation I'm going to turn into negative 40 by multiplying by negative 5. So when I multiply the top equation by 8, I get 112x plus 40z equals 12 times 8, which is 96. And then I have negative 75x minus 40z equals 34 times negative 5, which is negative 170. So when I add these two equations together, 112 minus 75 is going to give me 37x. My z terms cancel. And then I have 96 minus 170, which is negative 74. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 37. And that is going to give me x equals negative 2. So I'm going to take this x equals negative 2, and I'm going to plug it into equation number 4 to solve for z. So when I do that, equation 4 is 14 times negative 2 plus 5z equals 12. 14 times negative 2 is negative 28. So negative 28 plus 5z equals 12. I'm going to go ahead and add 28 to both sides. And when I do that, I get 5z equals 12 plus 28, which is 40. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. When I divide both sides by 5, I get z equals 8. So now I have x and I have z, so I need to now solve for y. I'm going to use equation number 3, which was one of my original equations and plug in my x and z. So I have 4 times negative 2 minus 3y plus 3 times 8 equals 7. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 minus 3y plus 24 equals 7. So my negative 8 and plus 24, those are like terms that I can actually combine to solve this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Negative 8 plus 24 is 16. So 16 minus 3y equals 7. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. And when I do that, I end up with negative 3y equals 7 minus 16, which is negative 9. Now I can divide both sides by negative 3. And when I do that, I get y equals positive 3. So now I can finally write my solution as an ordered triple. I have negative 2, 3, and 8. And that is the solution to this system of equations. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this problem on your own. So here's a solution to this system. I went ahead and decided to eliminate x. And the reason I did that is because notice that x is already equal and opposite in some of these equations. So I went ahead and combined 1 and 2, which gave me equation 4, which is 5y plus 5z equals 15. Then I combined 2 and 3 because, once again, x was equal and opposite. So I got 4y plus 3z equals 10. Then I combined 4 and 5. I decided to eliminate y. So I multiplied the top equation by 4 and the bottom equation by negative 5. When I eliminated y, I was able to solve for z. I got z equals 2. I took that z equals 2, and then I plugged into equation number 4, and then I solved for y. So when I solved for y, I got y equals 1. So I took y equals 1, and I took my value of z, and I plugged into equation number 1 and solved for x, which gave me x equals negative 5. So the solution to the system is negative 5, 1, 2. So remember that using linear combination and substitution, you can solve a 3 by 3 system of linear equations. If a 3 by 3 system has a solution, it'll be an ordered triple in the form of x, y, z.